Hey everybody, this is John the Other, obviously. And um, the following, I guess, is a response to two videos recently uploaded by Sargon of Akkad. Uh, his two reviews of uh, Sololinsky's Rules for Radicals. I have a copy of this at home, um, and I've read it. And I remember uh, a couple of years ago when I used to write for a fairly well-known men's rights website, uh, when the um, operations manager of that website, who no longer works there either, began um, talking internally with all the, the senior editors and contributors about Rules for Radicals, saying this is a really good book, this is, the, this is a tactical manual, uh, this is what we should be reading and following. And, of course, I've read it. I've read uh, Machiavelli's The Prince. Rules for Radicals is a very effective and powerful set of tools for achieving power, for uh, controlling a political discourse, for uh, creating social change, and so on. I'm not here to debate that the tools, that the techniques in Rules for Radicals are not effective. They are. Very much so. My objection, and I do have an objection, is uh, really, in reference to the opening, uh, par the opening paragraph of the opening chapter of this, talking about um, ends and means, and I'm going to read the opening paragraph here off my screen, uh, just so that we all have a reference of what we're talking about. Um, that perennial question, does the end justify the means, is meaningless as it stands. The real and only question regarding the ethics of means and ends is, and always has been, does this particular end justify this particular means? Life and how you live it is the story of means and ends. The ends, what you want, and the means is how you get it. Whatever we think about social change, the question of means and ends arises. The man of action views the issue of means and ends in pragmatic and strategic terms. He has no other problem. He thinks only of his actual resources and the possibilities of various choices of action. He asks of ends only whether they are achievable and worth the cost. Of means only whether they will work. To say that corrupt means corrupt the ends is to believe in the immaculate conception of ends and principles. The real arena is corrupt and bloody. Life is a corrupting process from the child learns of means and ends. Okay, that's the opening um, paragraph of the chapter early in the book called Of Means and Ends. And my objection to it is going to sound like a moral objection or an ethical one, and it's not. It's not. My objection is practical, and it's this. Of course, everybody trying to affect social change, well, I guess almost everybody trying to affect social change has the idea that they are doing something good, that they're doing something noble. Everybody believes in what they're doing. You know, whatever, whatever side of a political discourse you might be on, you think you're doing the right thing. If you're on the left and you look at the guys on the right, it's easy to demonize, but the guys on the other side of the political divide, they think they're doing the right thing just like you think you are. So, the, the problem arises in that, in that opening um, written by Saul Alinsky in 1971, or written before that and then published in 71, he basically says that any tactic, any manipulation, any fuckery that you can come up with to advance your political goal is A-OK -okay as long as that tactic works, as long as it gets you towards your goal, uh, it moves you forward in some direction. But what Alinsky and, I guess, his advocates seem not to understand, and Alinsky touches on this, but I, I think he gets it wrong, is that if you try to move towards, I mean, we're just going to pick an arbitrary goal here. Let's say uh, uh, more equitable outcomes in the criminal courts and in the civil courts of you know the nation state that you live within. You're just looking for more equitable outcomes equitable from your own point of view. And in order to get that, you following Alinsky's, you know, uh, guidelines that any tactics are, are, are usable, any tactics that will get you there, whatever the tactics are that are most effective, that's the one to use. 
and to have no concern for the ethical or the moral consideration. Remember, I said, my concern is not a moral one, it is a practical one, but this is a moral question. I'll read again part of that quote. Alinsky says, the man of action views the issue of means and ends in a pragmatic and strategic term. He has no other problems. So if you advance towards what you think is a noble goal, but you're engaged in all kinds of chicanery and fuckery to get there, lying, smearing your opponents, whatever, it's not that my it's not that you're doing something morally wrong, although that could be argued. What's more significant is that at the end result, even though at the beginning of your process you had a noble ideal in mind, if you get there through fuckery and deception, your result will be a result wrapped up in fuckery and deception. It will be a corrupt result. So the end result, you're looking for you know more equity or transparency or whatever in the courts, it's just an, an example, and you're going to engage in all kind of chicanery and underhanded dealings to get there, whatever gets you forward of ends and means, only the consideration of what works, right? But if your practices to get there are uh, underhanded, deceptive, um, uh, manipulative, unethical, then your result is unethical. And this isn't a moral consideration, it's a practical one. And that's my problem with Alinsky's tactics. Not that they don't work, but that the, the lack of consideration for the relationship between tactics and results um, seems to be a failure of comprehension by Alinsky and by his uh, advocates. And that's my whole complaint with Alinsky. Not that it doesn't work, but that he's missing something really fundamental to, in the understanding of how methodology impacts results. Anyway, thanks very much for watching, and of course, have a lovely day.